Manhattan Neighborhood Network, in partnership with the League of Women Voters of New York State, presents Race to Represent, a MNN election initiative. Hello, I'm Dr. Christina Greer, and this is Race to Represent. Today, we're going to bring you an interview with New York State Assembly member Inez Dickens. The New York State Assembly is the lower house of the New York State Legislature. Alongside the New York State Senate, it forms the legislative branch of the New York State government and works with the governor of New York to create laws and establish a state budget. Legislative authority and responsibilities of the New York State Assembly include passing bills on public policy matters, setting levels for state spending, raising and lowering taxes, and voting to uphold or override gubernatorial vetoes. There are 150 seats in the Assembly. All of them are up for election this year. Inez Dickens is the Assembly member for the 70th District of the New York State Assembly. She's a Democrat. The district includes portions of El Barrio, Hamilton Heights, Harlem, Morningside Heights, the Upper West Side, and Washington Heights in Manhattan. She is running unopposed. She formerly served on the New York City Council from 2006 to 2016. She was sworn into her first term in the Assembly on January 1, 2017. Today, she joins us to discuss her first year in the New York State Assembly and her vision for her next term. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here, Assemblywoman. Um, I know everyone in the district just calls you Inez. Yes. So yes, I'm going yes, yes. uh, to. That's exactly what they I've call been me. given permission. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, you've, you've had a long career of public service, and now you're in Albany. And so, New York State has a budget of $168 billion. billion. Is your district getting a fair share of the resources? Well, I'm from always going to say no. Right. I don't care how much I'm getting, I'm going to say no. But in the state, uh, it's a lot different for budgeting in that you're doing it for the entire state. You're mm -hmm. not doing it for your district. You're doing it for the entire state. So um, you have to fight to get certain things for your district. You have to negotiate mm -hmm. to get certain things for your district. Um, and it's it's not like a pot of money is guaranteed like it is in the council where you know you're going to get X amount of dollars for your district and then you fight for extra. Uh -huh. Here in, in, in Albany, it's a lot different in that uh, there's no guaranteed. It's just you've got to, to negotiate mm -hmm. to, to get a piece of an initiative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, and you served in the New York City Council before you made your way exactly, to Albany. Exactly, exactly. And so there's some overlap in, in the two districts from when you were a city council member and now. Um, what are you hearing from your constituents? So I know that, you know, you just said it's not guaranteed money, so you've got to go up there and fight and negotiate, but do you have a constituent's office if so, where is it? So you can tell our viewers. But what are the main concerns of your constituents right now well, in your new office, role as assemblywoman? My assembly district woman? office has always been in the Powell State Office building. Okay. It was on the seventh floor when I was in the council, and in the ninth floor now that I'm in the state assembly. Um, the and that's on the corner of 125th and, and yeah, Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard and Adam Clayton Powell Boulevard. Okay, and um, we're we're open. Mm -hmm. Five days a week, um, seven if we have to. We're in the district. Um, but the issues are virtually the same. Mm -hmm. The lack of affordable housing is a critical component. Education, the funding for CFE, yes, CFE. Uh, the campaign, uh, the uh, fiscal equity for education. Okay. The gardens, the community gardens, um, which were a city-owned parcels that the community took over and started planting fresh vegetables frequently. And some, they used it as a sitting garden with flowers, but most of them raised some kind of vegetables. And um, they gave them away. They didn't really sell them for the most part. They just used them themselves and, uh, and, and gave them to, you know, friends and people in the community. Uh, they had onions and greens and, and uh, tomatoes and I availed myself of them I must admit <laughs> <laughs> you know but uh, that's a concern uh, the education the housing the the and immigration mm -hmm. has become a, 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 a very important because of what the national government the federal mm -hmm. government is doing um, against immigrants now right now it seems to be focused on um, Hispanic countries but 
the same thing can be said if we're talking about Haiti, mm -hmm. if, if we're talking about African nations. It's just that they haven't got to that yet. Mm -hmm. you know. And in some instances, they have individually. And I don't think that as many are, are coming in maybe from, from Haiti as, uh, and, and Africa as from uh, Hispanic countries. But I feel that at some point, it, it's, it's, they're going to be focused on that mm -hmm. just as, as they are doing against Hispanics now. And it's a civil rights issue, to, mm -hmm. to be truthful. And this, this, uh, this president, <laughs> this president uh, has made it okay to raise the ugly uh, snakehead of racism again. You know, it, it, not that it went away, um, but people controlled it. Mm -hmm. For the most part, they kept it down. And and um, I, when I was I was in Howard and in the uh, late '60s, the '70s primarily, and uh, they had killed some students on Kent State, mm -hmm. and on um, subsequently on Jackson State, at, in Mississippi. And we were having meetings. All the black uh, colleges and universities were having meetings all over the country about what to do, what to do. And I forewarned them. I told them. I said, you know, I'm telling you, you know the the that right now, you know, you've got the help of, of everyone, but that's not going to, look at their hair. Their hairstyle will tell you um, what the thinking mm. of, of America is, un unfortunately, and um, it's come to pass. Mm. It, uh, when uh, people are wearing long hair and uh, uh, ponytails, their, their thinking is more liberal. Who cuts and cut it off? They're 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 not quite so liberal, exactly. and so this 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 president has made it okay to to say I don't like Hispanics. Uh, uh, he's made it okay there there's to be borders. Mm -hmm. Now there it was all right, and, and look at the statement he made when when he talked about uh, uh, that it was all right. It seems like it's all right if you're European to come over. Right. Well, I mean, <laughs> we you know. We'll get to him on a, another episode um, because I really want to. I want to shift gears and kind of bring it back to your district, um, just because in a lot of neighborhoods in Manhattan, you can't help but see all these empty storefronts um, of businesses that have closed and gone out of business. And so, how do you, in your particular district, plan to attract and also help keep some of these local businesses? You, you know, uh, Christina, if you look. In all the communities, we have closed up stores mm -hmm. in in neighborhoods, not like on the major 34th Streets or 42nd Street, but in in neighborhoods, there's closed up stores. It's not just Harlem. It seems like it's Harlem to me because that's my community. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm concerned about. But when I drive around the city, or when I walk around in different neighborhoods, I see that they've got a lot of stores all on Broadway and the Upper West Side. They've got a lot of small stores that have closed up. And the issue is that these are not small businesses that we've lost. These are micro businesses. So when the government, whether we're talking about the city, the state, when they're talking about investing in small businesses, they're talking about those that uh, earn five million or more. Mm -hmm. Our businesses are micro businesses, of which I am the chair of, of micro business in, in Albany. And I'm focused on that because that's what I come from, a micro business. And we have not uh, really focused on those businesses uh, to raise the capacity so that they can become a small business. Right now, uh, the governor has raised the, the, the cap so that uh, there's 30 percent is, is to come from all of the state agencies must uh, take contracts from small business. Again, that's small business. Mm -hmm. That's MWBE. I'm talking about MBEs minority businesses gotcha. and they are the ones that are the micro and we don't have anybody giving any caps and helping the micro businesses now i can talk about small businesses as well but i'm the chair of the micro business and that's the concern because that's what's in my community and that's when it is most of the neighborhood stores are the micro businesses gotcha. that are not earning five million dollars a right. year and so how do, you, how do you propose to assist them so that they don't go out well, of business? Well, first of all, we need to start concentrating on how do we raise uh, the, the, so that they can 
uh, be enabled to qualify. The other thing is we need to divide the contracts so that contracts are smaller. So the contracts are not uh, uh, ten million dollars, but but small contracts like HPD had done in the city at one point, where they had small contracts for for ten thousand dollars that that you could you could work with and still survive because it takes a long time for the for, for the governments to pay. Mm -hmm. So you've got to you know you mm -hmm. got to do the work and then you got to wait a long time to right. get your money. In fact, I know of of several businesses that have waited so long they went out of business. So we're and we're talking about micro business again. We're not talking about small business. And so I propose that we need to uh, look at how do we invest in the in the small micro business, not just the small, but the really small. Right, the really small. Yes. And, so the, and that segues to something you brought up earlier, which is affordable housing, and so the concerns that a lot of people in your district have. What are you doing in Albany to sort of address some of those concerns and those issues? From your There's a lot of issues with affordability. Um, in the city council, you have more to do with the actual percentage of the AMI, the area median income, and with how many, the percentage of how many units will be affordable. That's a negotiating tool that you have in the city council. In the, in the state, the state does more investment into uh, the development, like A. Philip Randolph at 114th Street. Uh, that was done with, between the city, the state, and the feds uh, in order to uh, rebuild, because I, I don't know whether you're familiar or you recall 114th Street, but there was a NYCHA uh, the the, the four-story NYCHA on 114th Street on both sides. And um, what, what had happened, I guess, 30 years ago, 25 years ago, um, they stopped investing in that. And one side, the, the south side, was totally unoccupied. And the north side was occupied, but in very poor condition. And it took, you know, people are afraid. People are afraid of change. And it took me, um, I guess, about five or seven years to work with the tenant association to get them to understand that I'm fighting to get this redone. And I got the feds to come in, I got the state to come in, and the city to put in uh, on, with uh, West Harlem Group Assistance, that's Donald Notice, and to, which is a, a, a black uh, not for profit, to reconstruct one side and 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 move the people back in they would not mm -hmm. lose mm -hmm. you know their their apartments and they were they were afraid they were going to lose them right. because now we've seen, unfortunately, yes because that has in happened the past, that has happened. moved people out of the community and you know, they I are not welcome back in. When they before, when you built affordable housing, you had to uh, say 10 percent, 20 percent. You had to do affordable, and what they did, they put it affordable someplace else. So they built in Harlem, and maybe you had to move to Brooklyn or the Bronx or the East Side or the Washington Heights. But you did not have to put the affordable units in the community right in which they were right. building, and that is as when one component that has changed. You now have to put affordable units in the community. If you're building in the community, then those apartments have to be in the building that you're building. So at, at, at A. Philip Randolph, for instance, um, we, we got it done. So we, we reconstructed the north side and moved everybody back over to the north side. They weren't in the same apartment, they were in the north side. And th the apartments are beautiful and they're very happy. And now we have started construction on the 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 north the north side, they moved to the south side. Where they're on the north side and um, building those units now, okay. um, but they have been you know completely empty. Right. I mean, it, it was, can you imagine an entire block where on, uh, on one side Nothing. there are buildings, but none can be occupied there in bad condition? And this is NYCHA. Right. Well, um, I'm going to shift gears a bit just because. You've mentioned affordable housing is definitely an area of concern, but you've also been very vocal about bail reform. Um, yes. And so what are some of the primary changes you want to see coming out of Albany surrounding bail reform? Well, there's, there's a couple of things that encompass um, bail reform. And one of the things um, is because New York State doesn't have expungement. 
And uh, I had two uh, town hall meetings, one in March and one about two weeks ago, uh, dealing exclusively w uh, with the letters that they will give you, which doesn't, it's still difficult to get a job. If you went to jail uh, or unfairly, just or if you went because you did do something, you it, you should be given a second chance. Um, the bail reform that we did in 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 Albany um, will allow us because it was up to the discretion of the judge. So you could have uh, been caught with marijuana, and you got hit with a huge bail that your family could not mm -hmm. afford to do. Now that has been changed so that there's some parameters set on this so that it's, well, not with marijuana because now we're getting ready to, to legalize, I believe, uh, cannabis. But um, the, we had to reform, the, 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 the whole judicial system needs to be reformed. But you, you have to start with something. And right. we started with bail, we started with raise the age, and the bail will allow us to get out of jail instead of serving a sentence for, for a year or two years mm -hmm. and before we get to court and, and are either convicted or set free Set free, you've served two years already, mm -hmm. and if you have to go to jail, that doesn't count. Right, right. And it's, it's disproportionately targeted to... Disproportionately, some, mass incarceration in, in, in communities of color. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you also mentioned your support of community gardens. How have you been able to protect them as developers try and seek out these new properties in your district? I, to build I don't have the same housing. protection ability in the state uh, that I did in the in the city council, mm -hmm. where I could work with the community gardens. Um, in some instances, or a few instances, they want see because what what the problem is is do you build affordable housing on the on the land because we need it, mm -hmm. and and you've got some people saying take the garden build affordable housing. The fear is, is it going to be affordable? Mm -hmm. Or are affordable they going to be? Affordable for whom? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It might be affordable yeah, exactly. for someone making six exactly. figures, but not and so, everyone else. You know, or can, shouldn't we have some greenery, even though this is an urban area, mm -hmm. should not we have um, some greenery? Should not our kids be taught how do you raise mm -hmm. different vegetables? Mm -hmm. um, because it, it, they could be scientists that may develop a system. Right. At some point, so uh, you know, it, it, it becomes a, a, a fight w within the community. Mm -hmm. There are those who say, "Let's keep a community garden, some community gardens," and then there are those who say, "I want affordable housing." Mm -hmm. And and for the elected, it becomes, "Oh my God, is it going to be affordable if it's built?" Right. And and I just happen to feel that we do need some community gardens that they have to be maintained so that we have a place for the kids to go and play locally in their block. Right. We raise vegetables, they're given out, they're not sold, and, and, and it's fun. Mm -hmm. And they have parties for the kids. You know, many right. of the community gardens uh, has a place other than just going to the uh, New York City playgrounds. Right. Uh, and and it's, it's, it's convenient. Right. So I, I do support the community gardens. Um, I do support affordable housing. And sometimes I have had to make the choice when I was in the council of taking it, uh, particularly if it was, you know, small and build a smaller building mm -hmm. that I could ensure was affordable. Right. Well, I mean, for, and, and community. for your community. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, this sort of somewhat segues to kind of this, you talk about this idea of green spaces and, and really creating mm -hmm. this like multifaceted community mm -hmm. for, for children, yes. especially, yes. Um, which you've been really involved in. For, some, for several years now. So one of your other issues that you've talked about is sanitation. And so it's a large issue for you. Why did they take the waste ba baskets um, from your district? And well, what's been the result of that? We had a meeting with sanitation. When I say we, it was community um, and the community board 10. Mm -hmm. Because it seems to be central Harlem, and that I had it was my district, mm -hmm. and we met with sanitation, and uh, we were told that we were abusing the trash cans on the corner, um, and I wanted to know what do you mean abuse? Were we throwing them in the street? What were we doing? The abuse is that they said uh, some people were putting house garbage in the in the trash bins, and that really that is for. Uh, uh, people walking down the street to put their trash in. Uh, the, my first question is, uh, 
you could be walking down the street and you could have gotten your mail and opened up your mail and thrown it in the garbage as you were passing by. It didn't necessarily mean that you were at home. Mm -hmm. You could have gone to the post office, gotten your mail out the post box, and threw it right there. So that didn't necessarily mean that that was house garbage. Mm -hmm. So how do you determine what's house garbage and what's not? Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Second thing is, um, particularly during the summer, we eat uh, uh, in the street. We eat hot dogs. We eat uh, anything, watermelon, right. chicken, you know, we eat in the street and uh, potato chips. And you throw that in the trash can. We, we're encouraging people. We say, use the trash can. You must use the trash can. Throw it in the trash can. Don't throw it in the street. And then they take the, the, the cans away because they say they go through the garbage. And the garbage has house garbage and they they used to go through it and give a ticket to the person whose name was on there which could be unfair because it could be someone walking down right. the street but in any case they now said well because we're putting house garbage in the trash now they didn't say which trash cans was right. it a certain block that was abusing and they took away all the trash cans you go down right. Adam Clayton Powell you go down Frederick Douglass Boulevard you go down Malcolm X Boulevard they're all gone right all gone and what's happening people are putting the garbage where they it used to be right where a trash can used to be and so now it's loose garbage right. that they're putting at those corners and then the San comes through and gives a ticket to the building owner or to the store owner, mm -hmm. the micro store owner, of $150 that they have to go down and fight that they're probably going to lose. Right. Wow. Well, you've given us a lot to think about. So before I let you go, what are some of the bills that you're most proud of sort of initiating this first term in Albany and what's next for you uh, well, after September 13th and moving forward? Well, the, the, the last, the very last bill I did, really I guess on the last day, um, I got through a bill um, for um, persons that are handicapped. Um, I'm a member of 504, uh, which is a, 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 a political club uh, com whose members have various physical uh, handicaps and um, I got through a bill that um, and had to find out where the funding could come from uh, that all public meetings of course state I couldn't direct the city uh, public meetings uh, dealing with the state had to have a, a hearing apparatus of which I found one that wasn't so costly so that all people would be able to participate in the meeting. I uh, put a 504 member onto Community Board 10 as a member. Her uh, disability happened to have been hearing, and she was unable to participate in the meeting, even though she was a member. Mm -hmm. They didn't have any way to, to, to be able to, to allow her to hear the discussions going on. And so I thought about that, and um, it was a fight. I mean, it seems that n nobody wanted to do it, uh, or the, the Republicans didn't want to do it. And um, I, so I asked uh, the, 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 the uh, assembly member then, Morelli, would he allow me to talk to the Republicans myself? <laughs> Let me do it. Let me talk to them. And he said, sure. And I went over there and talked to them. And when it came to the floor, every Republican except one voted for it. And that one came to me afterwards and said, has she truly understood that I had negotiated and found that there, because the state says that, uh, um, that they help pay for the cost of things such as that, in that is, uh, they, they get contracts and buy it in bulk, right. so it reduces the cost. And she said, had she really understood that, she, she would have voted for it. So, before I let you go, what's next then? That is, that's a, a great well, accomplishment. I'm going to start con concentrating on the micro-businesses, and I intend to uh, try to start having meetings in other cities, you know, not just mm -hmm. in New York, but throughout 
the state because, like I said, we deal with the whole state right. and and uh, see what we can do about micro business because whether we're talking about Syracuse or Buffalo, all have uh, mm -hmm. MBEs mm -hmm. and and uh, they are all adversely affected by the fact that there has been no concerted legislation that is uh, that enhances or allows them to grow mm -hmm. and get contracts their capacity is not growing wow well thank you so much for oh, taking Christina, some time thank you for having me assembly I had such a good time woman. I, we, we, could, we, could, we could literally talk about everything <laughs> oh, starting yes. from oh, trump yes. all the way down oh, oh, well, we um, could. <laughs> but i just want to thank you and i i know our viewers really appreciate you well and no your, thank your you so much and thank you for the public service that you personally do the 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 issues that you have raised throughout the years by yourself and as 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 a member of media and the fact that you have uh, served as a beacon mm, of truth thank you thank you i appreciate it thank, thank you. you come back thank soon you, please sir. thank you okay <laughs> And thank you for watching. Please remember to vote. A closed primary election will be held on Thursday, September 13th, and the general election will be held on Tuesday, November 6th. For more information on voting, locating your poll site, and all the candidates, you can visit our website, racetorepresent.com, or the League of Women Voters website, lwvny.org. Thank you for watching Race to Represent on Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Bye-bye.